guys welcome back to my channel did i mention your name on my last video i didn't what was i thinking well cry no more i have a list and i'm sure your name is going to be on it this time i like to give a shout out to three of my active subscribers for watching and engaging my content if you want to be mentioned all you have to do is subscribe watch and engage that's all easy right today i want to talk about medieval torture methods you see, it's not easy to get someone to confess to a crime even if they are about to die. New York! There's a bomb in New York! Where in New York? You've been at this! Fuck you! Stop him! Get him away from my Be fucking neighbors! 701, we're saving third, second floor! Stop him! Second one! Fucking stop him now! The second one! Los Angeles, 187507 and Garage underneath it! Fucking stop him! Now, the following grisly torture methods and executions of the ancient world were designed to humiliate, dehumanize victims in their final moments. Although many of these methods have become known as medieval torture devices, likely due to an association with the Spanish Inquisition, their origins reach back to antiquity. Now, no matter their era, these horrific devices were used to maim and kill untold victims. What do you think is the most brutal? Just thank your stars that you were born in a different era with an understandable justice. Let's take a look at some of these medieval torture devices and punishments, shall we? The first one is called the rack. The victim's ankles are strapped to one end of the device and their hands to the other. So a mechanism was then cranked during the interrogation which stretched the victim's limbs. Now their bones and ligaments made startling sounds as the victim's joints were dislocated until they confess or are torn apart. The second one is the choke pier. This device, also called the pier of anguish, was reserved for women, homosexuals and liars, and even thieves. It's shaped like a ripe fruit. The choke pier was of intimate design. Literally, once inserted into the vagina or anus or mouth, the device, which had four sharp metal leaves, was cramped open and the leaves expanded wider and wider, mutilating the victim to get out a confession from them. Now imagine such a thing stuffed into your anus. <coughs> Yikes. The third one is called sore torture. It's literally what it means. Everyone from the patients to the imperial Chinese practice some form of death by sawing. Often, the victim is hung upside down, thereby increasing blood flow to the head, and a large saw was placed in between their legs, and two people get to saw it back and forth until the person is divided in half. Imagine what thought goes into inventing stuff like this. I think the person who thought of things like this is probably insane because you have to be out of your mind to design something so so gruesome, something so painful. Like, why couldn't you just shoot the person? Send them to prison, right? But no, you really have to make them suffer till they die, right? Okay, number four, the brazen bull. This is the worst of them all. I think it's the worst because when I think about it, I start to feel hot inside me. Now, imagine putting an egg in a kettle with water, then you cover it up and you allow it to boil. Now, as the egg starts to boil, you could hear it bouncing from corner to corner inside the kettle. And of course, the kettle is whistling. That's exactly what the brazen bull does. Now, the brazen bull was invented by Perillos of Antens in the 16th century BC. He suggested this equipment to Phalaris, who was a tyrant of Atragas. He suggested the torture device as the new method for executing criminals. It is believed that Phalaris was so disgusted by the description of the work of the bull presented by Perillos that he ordered him to enter the brazen bull and show him exactly how people would scream when they are in there. 
And of course, that was how he died. The purpose of this giant steel bow is to discourage people from committing crimes. Criminals were executed publicly by this method. They screamed, suffered, and ultimately died of the heat of the extreme heat. So you see this brazen bow. So they throw the criminal in there, they lock it up, then they put fire on that. That's like baking someone alive. And now when they scream, plus the heat coming out from the, uh, from the bull, it makes a certain whistling sound because there's an outlet in the bull's mouth as if it's making a whistle. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to be there when it happened. I am do I'm glad I was not born in that era because I can't imagine hearing something like that. It's... It's crazy, you know. All right, number five, the Judas Cradle. The Judas Cradle was a pyramid-shaped wooden device onto which the victim was placed at the top of the pyramid. He saw her hands and legs would be tied so that the weight could not be shifted elsewhere. The victim's feet were commonly tied with each other with the goal of increasing the pain. So whenever there was a movement of the feet, the pointy edge of the pyramid would slowly insert in the anus or the vagina of the victim and the torture would continue from hours to entire days. Now the time, however, also varied from victim to victim depending on various factors other than their own ability to bear the pain. So imagine having to sit still while this pointy thing is on your anus, if you move, it shifts, it pokes further. Oh man, that's some punishment. Number six, iron chair. Exactly what it sounds like, right? Well, this torture device was used extensively during the Middle Ages. Victims would be placed on the chairs, which featured hundreds of sharp spikes followed by the progressive tightening of iron restraints, forcing the spikes deeper into the flesh. Now, this could be on for hours, sometimes days. The spikes did not penetrate vital organs and blood loss was minimal, at least until the person was released from the chair. Death often followed. So, it was there bleeding gradually, but by the time you're released, you've you're almost dead. Now, the iron chair was used as a psychological instrument of torture. Victims would often confess after being forced to watch other prisoners being tortured by the device. Man, I don't even think you need to put me in a room with all these devices. You just need to show me a picture and I'll be singing like a bird. I don't want to experience it. I don't want anyone touching me. I don't want anything poking through my skin. The next one is the Iron Maiden. Now this device is so fiendish, it was once thought to be fictional. It's an upright sarcophagus with spikes. It's like a coffin standing up. Let's just describe it in an easier way than with all these complicated words. It's like a coffin standing up, but inside that coffin, there are spikes in it. So when they put the criminal in it, they shot it. The person is standing up, right? And these spikes are poking in every part of their body, right? Now, double doors open on the front, allowing the entrance of the victim. In one example, eight spikes protruded from one door, 13 from the other. Once the victim was inside, the doors were closed. There were the strategically placed spikes would pierce several organs. However, they were relatively short spikes, so the wounds wouldn't be instantly filled. Instead, the victim would linger and bleed to death over several hours. Imagine that. Whew, those people were very wicked back then, I can tell you. They did not, they did not have the spirit of God in them because you have to be a devil to think of something like this. The next one is Flaying. Flaying is a punishment where people are skinned alive. It has successfully made appearances in lots of different cultures. Assyrians, for example, used to hang the skin coat of the defeated enemies on the city walls to represent the cruelty and trigger fear in people's minds. Imagine being alive and being skinned. You watch your skin being peeled off your bones. You can only scream as much as you can and then you die or you pass out. And, I mean, you're not supposed to leave. It's, it's painful. It's, it's, it's wicked. The next one, which is number nine, is not only recognized by historians, but considered the cruelest of them all. The victim's legs 
are covered with a wooden or iron casing and wedges would be hammered between the board, creating pressure. The device had a lot of variants throughout the history. One was surfaced with metal spikes. Now imagine watching your knees being broken. Oh man, I don't want to imagine. You shouldn't. The number 10, the last one is being hanged, drawn and quartered. In England, the punishment for treason was to be hanged, drawn and quartered. The multi-step process was abolished in 1840. The victim is dragged into a wooden frame. They are then hanged by the neck until they are near death. They are then immediately castrated. Their genitals are burned before their own eyes. The final stage, quartered, is where the victim is cut into four separate parts and then beheaded. Why couldn't they just kill the person? Just kill them and be done with it. Just one shot, one gunshot in the head or uh, a machete slicing off their head or whatever. Do you have to cut someone in four pieces? Do you have to peel their skins off? Do you have to harvest their organs right before their eyes? Things like this, it's, it's just weird. It's me. Uh, human beings have done really terrible things in the past and Thank God for civilization because, man, I don't know how we live in a society where this is practiced. Well, I'm glad I'm done telling you about it. You go home and think about it. I'm done thinking about it. Today's shout out goes to Shola Sanya Sanya, Kikelomo Mojirayo, and Leo Ortiz. Thank you guys for watching and please subscribe to my TikTok channel at Stories with Oluchi. I can assure you that the stories I have over there are not always posted here. They are short and creepy, so go check them out. Thank you and have a good day.